former House Speaker Newt Gingrich, Fox News contributor and host of the new podcast, Newt's World. All right, Speaker, you and I have been in running around Washington for a long time watching these various debates, the culture wars and so forth. Why are the Democrats continuing to have this blind spot on where many in the middle reside on issues such as the issue of life? Oh, look, I think that the uh, true faith of the left wing of the Democratic Party is now in full blossom. I think they get together in meetings, talk to each other, go out to fundraisers with people who agree with them, and, you know, convince themselves, for example, as you pointed out. I mean, I, I, if you had ever said to me 5, 10, 15 years ago that we would be approving infanticide, and as you point out, the New York legislature would be applauding and cheering that they'd pass the right to kill babies after they're born, uh, this is grotesque. And most Americans don't agree with it. But among the hardcore left, on issue after issue after issue, uh, they believe things that I think, personally, are crazy. Uh, and that I, I don't think the American people will endorse. And I think it may set up a 1972 George McGovern disaster, where they end up so far out on a left-wing limb that people decide they just can't vote for him. Well, I think, Newt, it, going back to Phyllis Schlafly and the Equal Rights Amendment, you know, she successfully led the effort to kill the ERA. I remember reading about how the Democrats back then thought, oh, we got him now. We're going to vanquish the Republican Party forever. And what happened a few years later, Ronald Reagan was elected. So, I mean, they've been, they've been hitting the same drum for decades about the social issues, well, but these social issues don't go away. The Democrats just keep uh, moving further and further to the left. Look, I was in California over the weekend talking to people, and the number of women who came up to me and said they're really worried because they think their daughters are not going to be able to have a successful women's sports program because of the drive of the Democrats to basically allow transgender males uh, to dominate women's sports. And I don't think people have realized yet what an assault this is going to be oh my gosh. Uh, on women and on their right to, to compete. Uh, but that's the sort of thing you're not going to get Vogue magazine to print, and you're not going to get The New York Times to print. Uh, and that's why it takes a while. The country gradually recoils after the uh, left-wing establishment has done all it could. And I think you're going to see that kind of recoil on eight or 10 or 12 issues this, fall, this, this coming year. Yeah, I think you can kind of picture Newt Trump looking at his Democratic opponent and saying, now, your party actually passed legislation in the House that would compel girls in a locker room to welcome a biological male in the locker room while they're getting ready for their sports or leaving the locker room, that that would be compelled by federal yeah. law, right? I mean, Trump's never going to let them right. weasel and, out of it by, by saying, way, well, I believe in choice. No, no, no. You want boys to shower in the same locker room as girls because that's what the legislation mandates, right? And they're going to have to answer that question. Look, look, look in, in Connecticut, two transgender males uh, won the, the women's uh, sports event have for the state Track championship. And, field, yep. uh, and, you know, and, and let, let, let's be clear about this. This is the most bizarre reversal of all the principles of a 50-year fight for women's rights. Yeah, feminism. Uh, Where are the feminists? That, that you've ever seen. I mean, you're, you're, you're presently going to have a transgender male soccer team. I mean, it's crazy in terms of what, what does all this do to women's rights to be able to compete and to be able to be involved well, that's uh, in an environment where they actually have a reasonable chance to win. Yeah, well, again, they're, they're, they're so twisted up in knots and radicalism. I don't think, I don't, I don't think they know how to unknot themselves at this, at this point. By the way, Newt, this was Wonderkind Mayor uh, Pete Buttigieg at the Supreme Court rally today on abortion. I think this is just one more example of a moment where the majority of Americans agree on something, and uh, there's a lot of extremism in the Republican Party that's uh, forcing moderates to ask whether the Republican Party has left them behind. Extremists in the Republican well, Party? I, really? I, I, I don't know how to explain to I don't know how to explain to the mayor that uh, the overwhelming majority of Americans, about 81 percent, are opposed to killing babies after they're born that the positions he's taking are very minority positions, 
Uh, and I think that again and again, you have the same conversation going on. You have left-wing Democrats going to left-wing rallies to say left-wing things. The left-wing rally applauds. And then to compete, the next person comes in and has to be even more extreme. Uh, and that's what you have 20-some Democrats now running wildly to the left. Well, and Newt, uh, Kirsten Gillibrand is another individual who's been trying to regain or, or gain, I should say, any traction in this very crowded field. And a lot of people thought after the Me Too movement, Harvey Weinstein, that, that she would really emerge from the pack. But she's also struggling. She said this about an issue near and dear to your heart, the Hyde Amendment. Let's watch. You know, uh, we have a tenet in our constitution. It's called separation of church and state. And uh, I do not believe that that is a valid argument. I think that the Hyde Amendment should be repealed. Newt, the Hyde Amendment. Tell the Ingram Angle audience how radical well, that is if you want to repeal that. I'd love to do the national polling on that. Look, I think the Hyde Amendment goes back to the 1970s and is a very simple statement. No American should be forced to pay taxes to pay for an abortion. Uh, it has been a consistent position for now for over 40 years. Uh, and again, but it's where they're going. I mean, they're going to say, one, we have the right to kill a baby after it's born. Two, we have the right to charge the taxpayer while we're killing the baby. Uh, I, mean, I mean, think about this stuff. I think uh, in a very radical position, Sanders, Bernie Sanders said the other day, he didn't mind if they had sex selection abortions. Well, what that means everywhere on the planet is girl babies get aborted. I mean, there's no question statistically. If you, if you permit sex selection abortions, there will be far more abortions of females than males. And that's what Sanders said he was willing to accept. So they're, kind of, they're sort of caught right now in a downward spiral, not just on this issue, but on a whole range of issues where I think that they're going to become harder and harder uh, to defend. Well, we played the soundbite earlier, Newt, in the angle, uh, and just demonstrating how far left the Democrats have been pulled. Now, I think Obama has always been there, but the party hasn't. And so whether it's on the question of gay marriage or, uh, or, or the issue of abortion or now gender bending and all that, I mean, you've you got you to sense that Biden is not comfortable with any of this. I mean, he, he's got to be like thinking, wait, my consultants are telling me I've got to say this stuff, but my God, I still got to go to mass on Sunday. I still got to like, I still got to figure this out. Well, well look, look, as you pointed out earlier when you, you showed the segment of, of Obama lying about his position on marriage, uh, Obama was, a, was always a radical uh, who understood he couldn't get elected as a radical. So in the classic tradition, uh, he pretended to be moderate long enough to get elected. But the, but the thing to remember about Biden, and I've known Biden for a very long time, Joe Biden is so shallow that he won't notice most of this. He'll just think it's kind of confusing. Uh, and he'll drift along being Joe Biden. And uh, if he can get nominated, it'll be by being this nice, pleasant doofus who doesn't know anything, uh, but he's not the other people. And I think that's what he's counting on, uh, is being, you know, the, being the least disgusting person in the field. And Nate, no, we're almost out of time, but the other issue that we, we touched on last night was this move against the founders. Uh, th this has been bubbling up for some time, pulling down statues and so forth, and everyone feels better when you, pull, I guess, pull down a Robert E. Lee statue. Uh, so that's, that's like, that was a big obsession last year and the year before. But now, of course, as predicted, moving against Thomas Jefferson, the author of the Declaration of Independence. Sure. Buttigieg says, well, we can rename our dinner sure. maybe because we have people evolve. But if you're going to rename a dinner, you know, not Jack Jefferson Jackson, Jackson Jefferson, rename that, why wouldn't you rename schools, boulevards, and ultimately take down statues. Look, I mean, if a dinner is objectionable, what about a look, school name? Look, I've, I've, one of the things I've concluded is these people are now so radical, we have to take them head on. This is left-wing fascist totalitarianism. This is an effort to erase the memory of the United States. Thomas Jefferson is a fact. He wrote the Declaration of Independence. Uh, he was, uh, the, you know, he created the Democratic Party, ironically, uh, in terms of people who now want to uh, besmirch him. He uh, was extraordinarily important in the development of America. But what you have is a group of left-wing Democrats who would like to erase all of our memories of America. Uh, they, they really, die deep down, would like us to be Venezuela. Uh, and I think that it's remarkable. And I think we, on the conservative side, have to be much tougher oh, at much taking tougher. them head on and saying what it is. Well, it's you know, Taliban. And so, it's Taliban so, so, 
Well, it is. It's, it is exactly like the Taliban destroying the two Buddhist statues that were that were historic worldwide monuments. And you have people. Pete pretends to. He's exactly like Obama. He pretends to be a moderate until oh, you time. listen to him a little bit and realize he's as radical as anybody else. Yeah, and an, an extremist with a, you know, moderate exterior or a mild mannered exterior. Mr. Right. Speaker, you are so great. We didn't even have time to get into the Dems impeachment obsession, but they're not going anywhere with impeachment, at least in my view. Uh, thank you so much, sir. No. Fantastic segment.